today we are going to be talking about histogram. So we've been talking about numerical data and we've been focusing for the last quite a few days on box plots and how box plots represent numerical data. Today we are going to talk about a different way to represent numerical data and that's histograms. Histograms organize numerical data in bins based on the class interval that they fit into. So whether we want to group it by fives, tens, twenty, twenty-five, etc. And the bars are connected. So histograms are different than the bar graphs that we talked about. They're very similar, but they are different. So you remember that bar graphs are separated and they are for categorical data. Histograms are connected and they are for numerical data. On the horizontal axis, this is gonna be your class interval. And on the vertical axis is going to be the frequency or relative frequency. Cannot spell today. And this is the same as when we did a bar graph. So remember on that y axis you can either do the count, which is the frequency, or you can do the relative frequency, which is the probability. It does not matter. All right, so the following is a set of data describing the number of cousins each student has. So if you look at this first chart, all of those numbers. So someone has 10 cousins, someone has 15 cousins, someone has 33 cousins, someone only has four cousins, someone only has one cousin. So this is saying how many cousins someone has. What we want to do is we want to create these intervals or these bins for our data. So to create the histogram, we're going to choose those intervals. So the first interval is between zero and four cousins. Now we want them to be equally spaced. We try to avoid doubling the number. So I wouldn't say zero to five and then five to 10 because where does the five go? Does it go in this one or this one? So we don't overlap those numbers. So our first interval is between zero and four and there are five numbers there. Zero, one, two, three, and four. Five different. So we're having groups of five. So our next class is going to be from five to nine cousins, 10 to 14, 15 to 19, 20 to 24, 25 to 29, and 30 to 34. Now what we've got to do is the frequency. How many times does that occur? So I look for zero to four. Anywhere that I see zero to four, I'm gonna include four. So if I look through, there are five different people that have between zero to four cousins. We go for five to nine. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. All right, so I want you to go ahead and press pause now and continue to count and fill in the remainder of the class intervals. Sometimes this is where we struggle because you get a wrong answer because you counted wrong. So just make sure that you're including all of them or cross them out as you use them and that way you know you've accounted for all of them. All right, so if you counted correctly, there would have been 11 students that had 10 to 14 cousins, six for the next one. There are no students that had between 25 and 29, but there were six students had between 30 and 34 cousins. All right, so let's go ahead and take this information and create our histogram. When you're creating any kind of chart, whether it's a pie chart or a bar graph or a box plot, which we didn't focus on this one as much, but you wanna give it a title so that whoever is looking at it knows exactly what's going on. So this histogram is gonna be talking about how many cousins we have. On the bottom is going to be our intervals 
So our first interval, I'm going to label this 0 to 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35. And we see over here that we know exactly what's involved in each of those, so we don't have to worry about where is that 5 going to go. We have that data in our table. And the highest number that we have is 13. So let's go by twos because it'll be easier. So let's go up to 14. Two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve, fourteen. Okay, so in the first one we had five. So it's really similar to your bar chart, but again, it's not a category, it's a range. And notice how each of these are equal amount. It wouldn't make sense to have one bar that represented 10 different numbers and one that did five, because if you did that, you'd be purposely skewing the data. Each of these are representing five numbers. So they have to be representing the same amount. The frequency is gonna change, but we have to be fair here. And that's representing five, 13, Remember the main difference between that bar graph and the histogram is that the histograms bars are connected to each other and the bar charts are separated. The histogram down here, this is going to be our interval. And on this case, we did frequency or count. So the y-axis on the histogram and the bar graph is the same, but they are going to be connected. Our next class we have here is 11. Between 15 and 19, we only have six. Twenty to 25, only one person. No one between 25 and 30 there, 30 to 34. We have six. Now, if you don't like how I labeled zero to five, because technically five is gonna be in this one, which is fine, you can always say this is zero to four, this is five to nine, and so forth, if that makes you feel more comfortable. Okay, so we have talked about how to create our histogram. Now let's answer some questions based on our histogram. What is the least common interval? Well, that one is really easy. So the least common is going to be between 25 and 29 cousins. But then if we look at here, no one has more than 33 cousins. Remember, we created the histogram and we created those class intervals. Maybe you did groups of 10 versus groups of five. We wrote this one down in five because five was very manageable. We didn't have too many bars. But if it had gone up to 60, 70 cousins, all of a sudden we have way too many bars. So you're gonna create class intervals that make sense for your set of data. What is the most common? We can see right up here, the most common is between five and nine cousins. And I think you guys get it, the lowest bar is the least common, the highest bar is the most common. What percent, so we're changing things up here a little bit, what percent of students have between 10 to 14. If we are talking about percent, we want success over total. So how many students are have successfully 10 to 14 cousins? There are 11 out of total. So total, we have to add up five plus 13 plus 11 plus six plus one plus zero plus six, and we get that there are a total of 42 students 
that were questioned, 11 of them having between 10 to 14, so 11 of the 42, that would give me the probability, I'm going to change that into a percent. So 26.2% of the students have between 10 and 14 cousins. What is the median of the data set? All right, so this is going to bring us back to when we talked about the mean, median, mode, and this is a frequency table. We've talked about this before. We're going to talk about it again in our notes tomorrow, but a frequency table is a little bit different. You can do this in your calculator or you can do it by hand. It doesn't matter, but remember what median means. Median is going to be the middle number. So if I'm looking here and there are 42 students, I cut that in half, I'm looking for the 21st data point. That's going to be the middle. But the key is, remember, it has to be in order from lowest to highest, which is what our histogram does and our table as well. So if I'm looking at this, here is my fifth. Remember, I'm looking for my 21st. So 5 to 13, that's 18 people, plus another 11, that's going to give us 29. So our 21st data point is going to happen in that third row between 10 to 14. I could have also looked at that on the histogram. 5 plus 13, that puts us at 18. 29. So it's going to happen within this class interval. So according to the histogram, that's going to happen between the 10 to 14 cousin interval. Now, if you were only given the histogram, that would be as specific as you could possibly get. But this isn't always going to happen. If we look here, we have all of the data. So if I were to go back to the original data, which most of the time you don't have, you just have the histogram. If you calculate the median of all the data, the median is actually at 10. But again, so you can look at it from two different directions. If you look at it from the histogram, you're looking for the 21st data point, which is going to happen within that interval of 10 to 14.